Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. So it bothered me that our LEDs were reversed from what we thought the switches should be. When the switch is up, the LED should be on. When the switch is down, the LED should be off. Um, so I went and took a look at the uh, schematic for the front panel, see why that's true. Turns out that the switches are in the correct state. When the switch is high, it's a 1. When the switch is low, it's a 0. But uh, this part of the schematic shows um, the output LEDs. They're, um, they come out of a latch. There's an 8212 octal latch. It's a D-type flip-flop latch. And the LEDs are connected such that when the output is low, the LED is on. Uh, you can see that the anodes of the LEDs are all connected to 5 volts, so you have to pull the pull the other side down to make the LED come on. So this basically reverses the logic uh, at the uh, at the front panel. And uh, it seems strange why they would do this. Uh, today everybody working with Arduinos uh, always hooks it the other way around, always, always makes sure that the LED anodes are being connected to the device and all of the uh, uh, cathodes are, are connected through resistors to ground. Um, so why did they why did they do it this way? Well, it, it it turns out that this is the way everybody used to do it back in the day because the uh, chips didn't like to drive things high, and so we'll take a look at that. You can see here this is uh, why the uh, integrated circuits were called transistor transistor logic TTL because there was two transistors um, on the output. Uh, one of the transistors pulled things high and one pulled things low and you could say well that's that's just like CMOS but in fact uh, there was a resistor also in the totem pole so uh, the resistor created a high impedance when you're pulling up uh, but when you were pulling down there was a low impedance so it was much easier to sink current than to source current and this shows what we see today in a CMOS uh, complementary um, um, logic where there is a FET that pulls things high and a FET that pulls things low and everything is complementary, everything is symmetric. So you can pull up high just as easily as you can pull down low. So you can wire your LEDs either to pull them high or to pull them low. So everybody um, usually makes them pull high. So uh, that's what we're used to today. All right, this chart shows the amount of current that a TTL device was capable of either sourcing or sinking. And the line uh, for 74 uh, TTL, you can see that the low, the IOL, the low current, could be as much as 16 milliamps. But the IOH, the high current, could only be 0.4 milliamps. So uh, you wouldn't have a very bright LED if you only uh, could drive it at 0.4 milliamps. So all of the LEDs were driven low. So can we fix that? Uh, well, we can't fix it in hardware, but we certainly can fix it in software. The 8080 has an instruction called Complement Accumulator, CMA. And so whatever's in the accumulator, we can complement, and that should flip all of the bits and should be able to fix our problem. So, uh, with this instruction in hand, let's go back to the MSI and rewrite our program and insert the complement and see if we can't get the bits in the correct orientation. Okay, let's write a new uh, program. Let's reset. Uh, we know our memory needs to start at F0000. Uh, there we go. And so we'll do an input, 333 three, three from FF. Remember, FF is these switches, so that's an input from address 3, I mean address FF. And now we're going to complement the data. So the complement instruction is 057. 057. Put that in. And then we'll do an output, 323, to FF, which are the LEDs. We'll do a jump instruction, 303. Back to zero, F0. Let's take a look at that program. Input from F, complement, output to F, jump. Looks good to me. So now, when the switch is up, the LED is on. Excellent. 